Now, as always, when you're not sure what to do, have a look at the documentation. Go to northboundnetworks.com and select the Zodiac FX. And there's some sales information on this main page. But what is of interest to us at the moment is the information in the forum. Paul, who's the owner of Northbound Networks, has created some categories in the forum to help you get information. So there's, for instance, general SDN networking discussions, Zodiac FX general, firmware, hardware, and Flowmaker general information. Let's start with the Zodiac FX general. Right at the top is a really important entry discussing the latest versions of source code, firmware, user guides, and drivers. Very important, get this Zodiac FX user guide. This contains a lot of very good information, including showing you different connectors. You power up and connect to the Zodiac FX using a USB connector. There's a serial interface and other connectors. The important things to point out here are firstly, you need to connect port four to your non-open flow network. So to enable connectivity between the switch and the controller, you need to ensure that port four is connected to an IP infrastructure that's non-open flow enabled. So connect this to your home network as an example, and then connect your test devices to ports one, two, and three. These ports are the ports that are gonna have open flow enabled on them. The raised jump is important. Don't set it to this position for normal use. So the jumper should only be connected to one of the pins. If you connect it as shown in this diagram, you'll erase the operating system of the Zodiac FX. Now that's important when you wanna do upgrades, which I'll talk about in a moment. But for normal use, don't connect these two pins with a jumper, only connect it to one of the pins. The document explains how to update firmware. I'm gonna talk through this process in a separate video, showing you how to upgrade the firmware of the Zodiac FX, that's really important. The command line interface information is shown here. There are different modes. We have base, config, open flow, and debug modes. This may change in later releases of the firmware, but for now, be aware that there is information here showing you the different modes available and different commands available when you connect to the CLI. In this entry, Paul also references GitHub, where you can download the source code. You can also download a compiled version of the firmware from here, as well as the USB drivers. So to get started, make sure that you download the USB drivers, and then you can connect the Zodiac to your USB port on your computer. The SAM BA programmer software is required to do upgrades and as mentioned, I'll discuss the upgrades in a separate video. Make sure you download the SAM BA 2.16 for Windows software. That's the correct software at the time of this recording. In this course, we're assuming that you're using Windows. So the videos are based on a Windows implementation. You may be able to get things working using a Mac or Linux, but I'm gonna concentrate on a Windows implementation. So the forum has a lot of information including questions such as this, where someone can't connect to Netflix through the Zodiac. And Paul has answered some of the questions. So this is a great place to look for information, see the discussions, and start learning how to use the Zodiac FX. In these videos, however, I will show you how to configure this device, and I will show you how to get it running with an HP controller, which I'm running within VirtualBox on my local PC.